Hey everybody, thank you for clicking on this video. I appreciate your support. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. So we are going to build another popular electronics project. This time it's from the February 1990 issue. And in particular, we're going to be building the audio sweep slash burst generator. So I've printed out the uh, instructions, schematic, PC board, etc. on some paper. So let me just go through it and show you what it should look like. So that's what the author uh, presented to us. And in fact, I have a box that's very similar, so I should be able to come up with uh, something looking just like that. In any event, so th this the burst sweep generator is a really good tool to have on your bench. You can obviously have a continuous sine, ways, sine wave from two, 20 to 2 kilohertz. And you can actually, I think, go from 2 kilohertz up to 20 kilohertz too on this thing. From what I read. Anyway, um, you can also have a burst signal output. And that's controlled by that sync input uh, RCA connector there. I'll probably use BNC connectors. And then, of course, you have a sweep. A sweep is very handy. So, you know, you can uh, have this device go from 20 to 2 kilohertz sweep through the band for a particular time period and then go back and do it again and go back and do it again. Um, nice little feature to have. In any event, I've got uh, the, the PC, well, the, let me talk about the PC board. So here's the PC board and it's a single-sided board. It should come out pretty good. Uh, uh, this time we're going to use the toner transfer method instead of the photo etching. We'll see how that goes. I've got a board ready. And I've got most of the components. I think I'm missing a couple. And in fact, the most important one that I'm missing is this. Uh, let me bring this down here a little bit. It is the XR2206. So I'm sure a lot of you, uh, you out there know what that chip is. It was built just for frequency uh, generators, right? To design a simple, quick frequency generator. Uh, sine wave, square wave, triangle wave, etc. In our case, we're just going to use the, the sine wave output. Um, anyway, I've ordered it uh, uh, from eBay. I think it's a genuine seller. There, It comes from the States, and the picture on it did show an older date card. I think it was 1982 of some sort, uh, as opposed to all the other Chinese ones on there that are fake, clearly fake. The, 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 the date on them is the same any listing you go to uh really bad reviews so i'm taking my chance on that uh chip and if you see this video that means i got a genuine version of it so i'm hoping i have that so anyway there's the schematic of it i kind of understand it from a basic perspective but i'm just interested in building the project and actually making it work and having it ready for us to use so i think the next step is for us to get that PC board uh, designed, right, with the toner transfer method. And what I'll do is I'll bring you back in. I'll have the toner transfer uh, machine ready, and I'll have the uh, the PC board design on a piece of paper. And I'll get into that. So for now, let's uh, just take a quick break, and we'll get back to the toner transfer method. Hang on. Okay, so I've uh, completed the design or the toner transfer method of getting the um, image from uh, the Popular Electronics magazine over onto the board. And I think this time it's going to be a little bit uh, better in terms of the traces and, you know, looking for shorts, etc. At least I hope so. Um, what I did is I printed, uh, well, I changed the uh, settings on my printer. So before I printed out the actual image from the magazine, I actually uh, changed the contrast a little bit to get it a little bit darker. So I'm hoping that uh, re results in a better board this time around. And not only that, but what I did this time is after I uh, transferred the toner over onto the board, I noticed that there was some, I don't even know, fuzziness, if that's the word I could use, uh, between the traces. And I remember the last board I made, it was the audio amplifier, the 30 watt audio amplifier. If you haven't seen that one, please go back and take a look. So this time I got uh, a really small screwdriver and I actually went through all of the traces and I got rid of all the fuzzy stuff in between the 
uh, some of the traces or most of them at least anyway. So I'm hoping for a better board when I put it in the etchant and um, well we're, we're going to see because that's the next step. So oh and of course the board design is is not right again. So I, I have to put the components right on this side. So unfortunately, I, you know, I, I don't know why that is. Um, it could be that the designer of the project initially wanted people to buy the boards and it would have been right, you know, where the components are on the other side of this, as opposed to me putting the components on this side. Now, again, like I said in another video, I could have uh, printed out uh, the board on a transparency and then used uh, the photo etching method and I would have had it the right way at that point um, but anyway I'm, I'm gonna go with it uh, it worked great on the 30 watt amplifier that I made so I I'm just gonna put the components on this I've double checked to make sure the pins um, so this is pin 2 on the XR 2006 and that goes to pin 2 of um, an op amp which is correct so uh, pin one will be over here for the XR2206. And funny enough, pin one for the op amp, the eight pin op amp is going to be here. So normally, you know, when you design a, a circuit board, pin one is usually this one at the bottom left. However, it turns out that, um, oh, sorry, that was pin two of the XRF to pin three. So this time I'm gonna have to put the um, pin one over here, but that's okay. It'll all work out. So anyway, let me uh, put this in the etchant solution. Maybe I'll just give you a quick uh, couple second view of that. And then we'll move on. All right. Hang on. Okay, so we're almost done. If you look at the board, you can see it looks to be complete. But I think there's, uh, yeah, a few small spaces left. So we'll leave it in there for a couple more minutes, and then we'll wash it off, and then I'll show you the result. All right, hold on. Okay, so good news. The board came out pretty good, much better than the last time. So the real big improvement this time around is the, the fuzziness that was in between the traces. So by me, you know, scratching out that fuzziness, before etching solved the problem. So I've got that uh, figured out. The, uh, the the actual traces themselves still have a little bit of airiness to them. I know it's really hard to see here from the camera, um, but yeah, there is some airiness. Now I think they all have continuity and of course I'll go through every trace just to make sure. And in fact, I know there's one that is probably open only because I think I scratched it out by, uh, by accident. So yeah, yeah, big improvement. Now I had some comments uh, that uh, from some other videos that mentioned uh, maybe going into paint. So take the image and then uh, highlighting the traces and making them darker, which is a great suggestion. It's a lot of work though, that's the problem, but uh, I might give that a try the next time around and see how that goes so they'll be much darker because it's the image right that I'm getting from the actual magazine um, you know and through all the steps of printing it out and then putting it on here you lose that um, that uh, the darkness of the lines um, but any event I think we're good to go so I think the next thing I'll do is drill out the holes and well actually I'll first check all the continuity of the traces and then drill the holes and then of course put the components on but let me get the drilling done and uh, I'll get right back to you okay good news I've got the board drilled hopefully I didn't miss any holes usually I end up missing one or two but I think I've got it this time um, in any event um, just an update on the drill press I always had troubles looking or seeing uh, the pads themselves so what I did is I put the oh, flashlight with a zip tie and that helps out immensely. So yeah, we're done with that. Remember, safety first, you don't wanna lose an eye, especially with the drill bits being so fine and they can break so easily. So again, safety first, if you're following along at home. I don't know how many people are, are actually going to build this project, if any, but um, anyway, safety for me. All right, let's move on to the component part. So with the next part, I'll actually populate the board 
and I'll bring you up to date at the, up to date at that point. Okay, I am back. All right, as you can see, I've got most of the components in. I'm just waiting for a capacitor to go in there. I've ordered it. Should be here in a couple of days. Uh, as you can see, I haven't put the ICs in yet. I have them all. Um, and actually, no, you know what? I don't have them all. I, I, I am missing one of them. Uh, I've got it on order, though. In any event, uh, capacitors, those are more precision-type capacitors. I think they're 5%, but I, I, I matched them uh, so they would be the same capacitance. Um, yeah, so the, the, the next step uh, that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, attach all of the uh, potentiometers, the switches, and all that kind of stuff. So I'll bring you in when, I, when I'm at that point, and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so it's a couple days later, and I think I'm done. Um, but it's getting a little bit late in the day, so what I'm going to do is double-check everything tomorrow uh, before I power it on. Now, I have powered this on uh, without the IC chips in it, and uh, I get the requisite minus 12 and plus 12. So I know I'm good there. The LED lights up. Um, oh, by the way, the power switch in this case is on the back. I know. I, I wish I could have put it on the front, but I, I, I just didn't have enough room. So once I put the knobs on, it'll take up a little bit more space. But, <clears throat> but that's okay. It'll all work out in the end. So what I did is I had for a transformer I had this thing here it was a nice transformer I'm not too sure where I got it but I got it from somewhere anyway it uh, does the job it's perfect for the unit I know it's hard to see because it's black um yeah so I got a fuse on there and the, yeah this looks like a rat's nest here I, I agree with you there however um it, it all does have a purpose <laughs> so <laughs> Anyway, like I said, I hope it all works tomorrow. I've got the chips in. Everything's in. I just have to try it and turn it on and see what happens. So, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll uh, give it a try tomorrow, and I'll bring you back. Okay, I am back. So, I've got some bad news. Bad news for me, not for you. It didn't work. So, that was the original board, and... I, I couldn't even get the first stage. So there is some procedure when you're building and testing this circuit out. Um, and it's the multivibrator stage. Uh, I won't bother showing you the schematic. In any event, when I was uh, testing that, nothing. Nothing coming out of it whatsoever. So uh, after a whole bunch of playing around and stuff like that, I, I still couldn't get it to work. So what I decided, because this is the upside down board is I decided to start fresh build a brand new board however this time I've got it correct I've got it uh, to traces on the bottom and of course the components on the top now I, I I had to learn how to do it so luckily I'd posted a video uh, earlier that said why are th the popular mechanic or popular electronic magazines reversed in terms of the boards and I had a great response and I learned a lot so thank you everybody that replied so this time around I decided to build a brand new board only because these traces weren't that great you can kind of see where it is airy and stuff like that now I think I have you know continuity on all traces but just to you know start fresh again I decided to um, learn how to use the, the features of GIMP. GIMP is a free uh, imaging editor program and I'm familiar with it because I used it years ago, like about 10 years ago, but um, with the great advice from uh, the people on YouTube, the ones that commented on my video, they uh, advised me that I could actually double the contrast or even make it uh, just increase the contrast, which was great and that worked just by a couple of clicks and then what I did is I, uh, I found a well. I could edit first of all before I can edit and darken some of the pa some of the traces and make them bigger. I found out that you could reverse the image uh, uh, with a couple clicks, so that that was the key. So with all that said, I built this new board and I'm populating it now. So I'm gonna have to rob some of the components off of this board here and put them on here. And yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping the second time around uh, goes well. 
and uh, I'll bring you back in when we get to that point. All right, so I'm back, and this is the final chapter, and unfortunately, uh, it's not in the box, which it should be, and I would be showing it off at this point. Uh, yeah, I can't get this thing going for the life of me. I mean, it's a burst, uh, sweep, and uh, sign continuous output generator. None of them are working. Now, I do know that the XR2206, which I bought off of eBay from somebody in Canada, they only had two of them, so I bought both of them, uh, no, actually, they had eight. I bought two of them. Can't find the other one, but I'm sure I'll find it eventually. It works. I put it on breadboard with a test circuit. Fantastic. So I know that's fine. Um, but yeah, I can't get anything to work. So the burst portion of this circuit uses a 4538 BCN. I can't get that chip. Um, I, I Mine's a 4538 BE, I believe. And they explicitly say that in the comments right at the beginning that you will need a, a BCN chip. Uh, obviously, this is a, a th what 34-year-old project, so I can't get that chip anymore, unfortunately. However, I can't even get the sweep and uh, the continuous output from, from this design. Now, i got to be honest with you. Uh, there's a lot of uh, mistakes on this project. And I looked at the March and April version of Popular Electronics, and usually what they do is they'll have some uh, somebody write in, explain, hey, there's a mistake on the on the board and should be this, etc. But nothing. Um, just off the top, the orientation of these regulators was backwards. Um, you know, obviously I figured that out, and it's correct in the schematic. Um, and the LED is reversed, and the switch 3A and B, the center pole, are, are reversed also. Obviously, I changed that and still can't get a damn thing to work. Another problem is uh, on the trace itself on the board. So this is pin 1 of uh, the 4538. And it, go it goes to a pad and some other components. Well, that, it doesn't go like that in the schematic. Pin 1 should go to 4, 8, 12, etc., etc. So I, I, I cut that pad and then um, I brought pin one over to pin four and still nothing. I, I've been at this for a long time now and I, I just got to give up. I've probably been working on this for over a week at least, almost every day. And it's time to pack it up. I'm going to put the board inside the box and to put a note on it saying failure. I figure I'll show you my failures and I'll show you my successes. And this is one of the failures, unfortunately. Now I did learn a lot along the way. But it's not going to work. Maybe. Never know. If I get a BCN chip one day, maybe I'll pop it in and see what happens. But for now, it's, it's uh, not, not a circuit, not a working circuit. So anyway, I'm going to start uh, the next week's project probably today sometime after lunch. And uh, there will be another project next week from Popular Electronics. So if you haven't, subscri haven't subscribed, please consider doing so and uh, look for the next project. Bye for now.